token of your confidence in what you have set uh, yourself to achieve. So, you know, I, at the end of this lecture, I shall take you through the question bank. I have got questions that I want you to focus in the question bank that are so decisive as far as examination is concerned. And another thing is, your exam is applied skills, you know, it has got three sections, section A, multiple choice, section B, multiple choice from a case, and then section C, constructed response questions. Now, for you to be effective with the limited time as you are preparing for your performance management exam, I would appreciate if you spent 70% of your time towards section C questions. Why section C questions? Because section C questions, they focus more on the application of technical content to the exam. How they, they, that's, that's the hallmark of section C questions and it's so important as you are practicing for your exam. So today, let us focus on this paper. I have sent the paper already in our WhatsApp class group, which is September, December 2020. And as I have said, the papers nowadays, they are merely screenshot of the actual CBE exam. So excuse the quality of the paper ETC. So if, if we are to highlight and stuff, some of these things, some of the functionalities will not be available. The reason being uh, the paper is a screenshot. So the company here, which is question number 31, is Yeltenance. They're saying Yeltenance is a fitness center offering pay-as-you-go gym facilities. It is a fully fitted gym with a capacity to accommodate 200 users at one time. It also has 100 car parking spaces and an on-site cafe, both of which are only for customers using the gym. You know? So it has got an on-site cafe, both of which are only for customers using the gym. Okay, so just let me answer this message. All right. The fitness center is a shower facilities for customers and the alternate provides all customers with a clean towel to use on entry. It opens, it is open 360 days a year from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Customers pay $8.40 for access to the gym for one hour plus unlimited time in the cafe. The cust if customers want to use the car park, they have to pay an additional dollar per visit and 80%, 80% of customers use the car park. Now, if you are given this, they are telling you that car park, it, it, they charge a dollar for car park and the probability of customers using the car park is 80%. So when you, if, you, if, you are, if you want to find the revenue you are expecting to get from a car park, it's simply dollar times 80%, which is 80 cents. That is called the expected value, remember. Yelth Nuts has been monitoring the number of customers attending throughout each day for the month of June, which is considered to be the average month. And for which Yelth Nuts was open for 30 days. It has determined that the average number of customers per day is 330 with 40 of these customers attending during the time 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then the total cost of the fitness center for June, excluding cafe, have also been recorded and analyzed as follows. Fixed costs is 48,000 and variable cost is $1.20. Now, on average, half of customers also used the cafe in June. In other words, the customers per day were 330. And we are being told that half of these customers used the cafe 
in June. But remember, 3.30 is per day. Half of these used the cafe in June with an average spent per customer of $2.20. Of this spent, 60% re related to drinks, which had a profit margin of 60%. So cafe, they are telling you that cafe is charging $2.20. Of the $2.20, 60% is on drinks, and profit margin on drinks is 60% again. And the remainder, which is 40% of the cafe, they were on food items, which have a profit margin of 40%. The specific fixed costs associated with the cafe are 3,600 per month. So there you go. Crash proposal. After reviewing all of the above information, the manager of Yotnats has put together a proposal to close the cafe at the fitness center and convert it into a creche for children. This would mean that parents would leave their children in the creche whilst they use the fitness, the fitness center between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. only. The charge for creche would be $4 per child. Initial research suggests that customers have an average of two children each. The crash is expected to attract new customers and increase the average number of customers between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. by 300%. Only these new customers will use the crash facilities. So in other words, crash is not going to be used by, quite a, by, all, by everyone, but only these new customers. Car park usage is expected to continue to be 80%. The fixed costs associated with running the crash are estimated to be 8,000 per month, and the variable cost per child is 50 cents per hour. Right. Requirements. Calculate both the number of customers Yield nuts need to break even and the marginal surface as a percentage for the month of June for the gym and for the cafe. And explain what each of your calculations in A tells us about the performance of the gym and the cafe. You can see that's eight marks there. These are some of the things that you have to do. To, 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 to to content with in Excel. So, so easy stuff. Allow me to zoom my Excel here. Perhaps it may come out right. So as you know, this is PM revision. PM revision and we are doing September slash December 2020. Please pay attention. I, I just want to put you in the mood so that as you are progressing, you appreciate what your paper looks like and everything will take shape. You know what I mean? Now we are on question number 31. Yields nuts, yields nuts. So when you're answering this, you, you, we all know the, 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 the formula for break even, but let me take you step by step, calculate both the number of customers Health nuts need to break even in the margin of surface for the gym. So we have, we have one, the gym, A1, gym. Now, you say selling price. What is our selling price for the gym? Selling price. You come up with a selling price and put it over there. What is the selling price for the gym? It's, you know, customers pay $8.40 to access the gym. It's here. Yeah. Customers are paying $8.40 to access the gym. And then, so this becomes our selling price right away. So you put $8.40. Now, those customers we have accessed the gym, we are told that they also park their cars. And in the second sentence, it's saying they pay an additional dollar per car park per the visit. So in other words, 
there is car parking fee, and we are now told that 80% 80 80 of the customers who use the car park, so in other words, expected car park fee becomes, you know, if they are saying 80% of customers, they are saying probability of a customer using the car park is 80%. So car park is 0 0,8. And then uh, this is the gym fee. And then we are told that the variable cost for the gym here is $1.20. So there's variable cost. Variable cost for the gym. Oh, sorry. Variable cost is $1.20 minus 1,2. So if I tally these things up, if I tally these things up, I get what? I get eight. That's contribution. So contribution is eight. So in other words, price is nine dollars twenty. If what we are getting is nine dollars twenty, that's what it means here. And less dollar twenty. So you are getting contribution of eight and then you have got this is contribution per customer don't necessarily say per unit as if we are as, as if these are mangoes we are talking of per customer here and then total fixed costs of fixed costs total fixed costs for the gym it's 48 yeah you are given fixed cost per month it's 48 so you put 48 one two three and right away you get break even point. Break even point. You remember you say total fixed costs divided by contribution, contribution per customer. So break even point equals 48,000 here divided by eight. Now, so break even point is 6,000 customers. So for you to break even in the gym, you need 6,000 customers. Now the question now is, uh, the question now that comes is, what is the margin of safety? MOS. MOS. So it's like, it's like days in a month. Days in a month. They are considering June to be the ideal month. So if June is considered to be ideal month, it's 30 days. So days in a month, it's 30. And then we have got customers per day. Customers per day. Customers per day for the gym is 330. And then monthly customers. Monthly budgeted customers. Monthly customers. You know, it's a matter of saying equals this. Then you multiply that by 330. 9,900. So for the gym, we're expecting 9,900. And break even point is 6,000. Remember, break even point is 6,000. So remember that. So what it means is margin of safety is it's by how much our budgeted output exceeds break even point as a percentage. So it's MOS margin of safety equals. Oh, sorry screwing me up. Margin of surface equals budgeted quantity minus break even point. So it's budgeted quantity, then you take out break even point, and then you divide this whole thing by break even point. And then if possible, you multiply that by 100%. So you are simply saying equals open bracket budgeted quantity 9.9 .9 minus break even point 6000 close bracket over 9.9 .9 and give your answer as a percentage so you get 39% as the margin of safety for All right 39.39% no wonder this is what the question is asked the question is saying for each gym Calculate break even point and also calculate margin of safety. So that's exactly what the question is saying. Calculate break even point and also calculate the margin of safety. And I'm sure you're following through on this. And then that's for the gym. And then for the cafe, then you say, 
Are you not seeing how your presentation should look like? A2. A2 is talking about cafe. So cafe is still fine. You simply say uh, average contribution, average contribution, because on cafe, we are not given necessarily the profit. If you check closely on cafe, we are given funny, funny stuff. We are told that in, concerning cafe, information is given here on this, where, I, where my case is here. Yeah. Because this is a picture, so I may not be in a position to highlight. Oh, let me see if I can. Okay, I can't. So uh, again, you can see that half of the customers visiting cafe, or, you know, every way they come there, half of the customers also use the cafe. And the average spend per customer is $2.20. Of this, 60% related to drinks, which is a margin of 60%. So it's a matter of saying average contribution is drinks. It's 60% times 60% times uh, $2.20. They are paying $2.20, of which 60% related to drinks. So equals 0 0.2, 2, sorry, 2, 2 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. That's 7992. And then there is, they are buying drinks and they are also buying food. Food, we are being told that it's the remainder. So the remainder, uh, the remainder relate to food items. Yeah, the remainder relate to food items which have a profit margin of 40. Uh, so the remainder is again 40%. So I put 40% here times 40% here times $2.20 because it's the remainder on that fee equals point equals 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 times 2,2. That's the remainder. So the average contribution we're expecting from the cafe is 1,44. That's contribution. And now we do have total fixed costs. Total fixed costs for the cafe. If you come here, we are being told here that specific fixed costs for the cafe is 3,600. So there you go. You come here and put 3,600. Oh, holy crap, it's acting up, you know. It's 3,600. That's the total fixed cost, 3,600. You know, when, when, when you are sharing the screen and you're doing everything at once, then you've got break even point. Again, it's total fixed cost of a a contribution per customer. That's how we calculate break-even point, total fixed costs. So what are we doing here? We are saying 3,600 equals 3,600 divided by this. Remember, these are customers. So you can round them to the nearest two numbers to find. Can we round them to the nearest two number? To find because we are talking of customers visiting the gym. Customers visiting the gym. So these are customers. Customers. You can't have a customer with a decimal. With a, with a, with a decimal to say I'm expecting 2,8 customers. Right? Right? And then so you have that. So they are saying calculate break-even point and margin of surface. Break-even point and the margin of surface. So containing break-even point, we now have the answer. So what is left is the margin of surface. So break-even point. Now you say days in a month. Again, days in a month is state. I told you, half of the customers are using the cafe, cafe customers, or cafe, cafe customers. Half of these are using the cafe, which is 
50% times 330. 330. So I get equals 0.330 multiplied by 50%. Notice I'm just following through. So it's 330 multiplied by uh, 50%. 330 multiplied by 50%. And then, then ca cafe customers in a month, cafe customers a month, cafe customers in a month equals 30 multiplied by 165. So you get 4950. Four, and then margin of surface MOS. So it's a matter of saying equals open bracket budgeted customers minus break even customers close bracket divided by budgeted customers. That's MOS. If you can put it as a percentage, you are getting 36%. If you can increase the digits, that's 36,43%. All right. So there you go. That's your MOS. Uh, so these steps would give you then what? How many marks? Five marks. Because it was three for gym and two for the cafe. So you'd get your five marks. And then the other que question is now saying, ex explain what each of your calculations in A tells us about the performance, <laughs> performance of the gym and cafe. Now, what is the, what, 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 how then can you explain? So this is B now. B explanation. Explanation of break even points and margin of safety for both cafe and for both cafe and gym. Now, what do you understand by break-even point and margin of safety? What, what, what really do you understand by this? When you are saying break-even point and we are saying margin of safety, what do you understand by this? Talk to yourself. Prim, can you hear me? Yes, Biula. Oh, you lay, you learn the, Oh, sorry, I'll get the name right. Don't worry. Now, nowadays you are not doing revision. I'll get it right. You learn the, What do you understand by by break-even point and what do you understand by marginal surface? Can you just tell me which one do you understand and bring it on to yourself? Hmm. Talk to your same, my wonderful team. What's your understanding of break-even point and what's your understanding of marginal survey? Yes, you lad. Break-even point is when you, you, you are reached a point where you're not making a loss. You're covering your expenses. Yes, you are not making a loss. Neither are you also making a profit. You are not, you are not making either profit or no loss. incurring losses. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the break-even point. So this is the explanation you are supposed to give here. It's a matter of saying, Jim. Jim. Uh, so you're saying Jim is to attain is to attain 6,000 customers, 6,000 customers for it to cover its operating its operating expenses expenses at this point at this output level at this output level comma it is either making 
profit no incurring losses it's 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 simple as that you you do it like that now what about margin of safety still on the gym the the gym the gym margin of safety of you know the margin of safety which is which was posted for the gym it's 39,39% it, it, it posted an MOS of 39%. So you, you continue and say the GM margin of safety of 39,4% implies that implies that visitors visitors to the gym then decrease by 39,4% for it to scale down, scale down to its break even, break even output. That's what margin of surface means. It means, you know, if you have got a margin of surface of 39%, it means your maximum output has increased, break, has exceeded break even point by 39%. So it can scale down by such, such a margin for you to get to your break even point. Get it. And then, cafe. Cafe. You know, cafe has got. Cafe has got uh, cafe has got uh, so 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 you copy you can copy this because you are you are in an exam it's you can still copy what we have typed because because of time you can copy what we have typed here you can copy and say cafe cafe you paste Cafe to reach our main customers for it to cover operating expenses 3147. So you come here and say 3147. Then at this level, it is neither making profit nor losses. So you can copy this again and paste this here. It's important to do that. So you can say the MOS of you now know that the MOS is not 39, it's actually 36,4%. 36,4% implies that uh, cafe visitors, not gym this time, cafe, cafe visitors, cafe visitors can decrease by this amount, by 36,4, for it to scale down to its break even point. So you do have the three marks for that, for the explanation. Make sure you explain nicely. Tell the examiner you know what these figures mean. It's so important, otherwise you may not. Now, I can see here that uh, some of you may still have issues with these. Uh, we did this, you know, I did send you the, I did send you the videos on break even points and stuff or cost volume profit analysis. Do, I, do you still remember the video? If you have forgotten the video, can you imagine? In this paper, you could Google how many marks. You would get 20 marks for that one topic only. Cost volume profit analysis. Where is it? No, I'm just flipping back in our WhatsApp class group where I was sending you plenty of supplemental videos. That's the reason why we, we were sending supplemental videos, to ensure that you get as much information, you get as much information as, as you can. With cost volume profit analysis, cost volume profit analysis. Where is that video, team? It appears I can't find it in the 
WhatsApp class group or earlier messages beyond this date were deleted. If you have it, Prim, can you send, can you forward that video in the WhatsApp class group? If you have it, cost volume profit analysis or break even point. This should be a video of that nature, guys. All right, okay, I have it. I have it. Well, you let it, you let it send it, it's too fine. No, I, I have to go to consult my phone, it's there. Oh, so, so let me delete the one I just sent. You have it. So you are not seeing, you are not seeing how important how important this video this video is as we go through today's revision paper today's revision paper so perfect guys you're not seeing that it's a matter of of encouraging each other to be up to speed with these things it's, it's so so important okay. ah, but okay guys so for that um Okay, proceeding, proceeding, they say calculate the budgeted total weighted average contribution to sales ratio and the budgeted profit per month for a health nurse if it closes the cafe and opens the crash instead if it closes the cafe and opens the crash instead. So it's a matter of saying, if it closes the cafe and opens the crash instead, what is the weighted average contribution to sales ratio? Six months there. So are you not seeing here that, are you not, are you not seeing in this particular question, it's a matter of saying C, C, uh, so it's a matter of saying Jim customers, Jim customers with crash. If you open the crash, Jim customers. So you come here and and read clearly nicely without crash gym customers are 330 so so it's like it's like current 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 are just 330 times 30 these are current gym customers which is equals to 330 by 30. but we are being told that if we open a crash they will increase so let us come to crash proposal. Notice it's a 330, but of the 330, we are told that 40 of these are attending during 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So the crash proposal is like this. The second paragraph is saying initial research suggests that customers have an average of two children. The crash is expected to attract new customers and increase average number of customers between 9 to 5 by 300 percent. Only these new customers would use crash facilities. So those who are attending between 9 to 5, it's 40 currently. They will increase by 300 percent. And these are the ones who are going to use the crash. So it's a matter of saying additional. 
additional. Additional, it's 40 currently multiplied by 300%. What you get equals 40 times 300%. So they are going to increase by 120. So these are now the new customers that we have. Uh, this, these are now the new customers that we have for the gym. For the gym, this is what we have. And then we have got contribution per customer. Contribution per customer. Contribution, oh, this is simply gym customers following crash proposal. Let me say following following crash proposal. Gym customers following crash proposal. Gym customers following crash proposal. So contribution per customer, it is still $8. We have it. So total contribution from gym. Total contribution from gym. So how much, what is your total contribution from gym? It becomes this multiplied by this, which is 80,160. This is now total contribution from gym. Oh, sorry. This is, uh, oh, I, I was supposed to say multiply by 30 on this one, multiply by 30. It's 120 per day multiplied by 30. Let me multiply that by 30. Right, multiply by 30 like this. So it's now 13,500. So total contribution from the gym is 108,000. You now know that. Then, uh, total sales from gym, total sales from gym, total sales, from gym, uh, you know, it's it's a matter of saying total number of customers three five hundred multiplied by nine dollars. Remember, gym sales is nine dollars. Is it nine dollars twenty? I don't know. Nine dollars twenty. So it was this multiplied by nine comma two. We calculated gym revenue at the beginning. If you can allow me to check whether it's nine dollars twenty here, so Jim is nine dollars twenty. So there you go. So it means total. So total contribution from the gym one hundred eight. Total contribute total sales from the gym one twenty four. And then let us have crash. Crash proposal. Crash proposal. Now, crash, how many customers are going to use the crash? We are being told that only additional customers are the ones who are going to use the crash, meaning these 300% increase. Additional customers are those who are going to, only these new customers will use the crash facilities. Only these new customers. So which ones really are we talking about? These ones. The 3.6 are those who are going to use are those who are going to use the crash facility. So you're saying you're saying price. Let us see if selling price for the crash crash selling price for the crash. It's selling price for the crash. We are charging four dollars per child, and variable cost is fifty cents. Four dollars here, variable cost fifty cents here. So what it means is four dollars, and then variable costs, variable cost fifty cents, zero comma five zero. Uh, it's minus here. What we what we get if if you tally this up, you get contribution three dollars fifty. Contribution three dollars fifty. Three dollar oh sorry contribution is three dollars fifty. Let me not type it. 
And then how many customers are going to use the crash? So then you say customers, crash customers, crash customers. Crash customers, we are being told that only the additional, only additional. That's what they've told us. So only additional equals 3,600. We've calculated it above this one, 3,600. And each customer is on average two children. Yeah. Each customer is on average two, two, two children. So you say, children pay children pay visitor children pay customer pay customer is two here so if you multiply the two you get total crash customers total crash customers so what are the total crash customers equals 3.6 multiply by two here. This becomes your total crash customers. So you then say total contribution, total crash contribution, total crash contribution, it's a matter of saying equals 7.2 multiplied by $3.50, 25,200. That's total crash contribution. And then total, Total uh, crash sales, total crash sales, it's a matter of saying $4 because selling price is four multiplied by 7.2. So total crash sales equals four here, multiply this by 7.2, 28,800. Remember the question says, Calculate contribution to sales ratio. Calculate contribution to sell, weighted contribution to sales ratio and budgeted profit for the health nuts if it closes the cafe and opens the crash. So you're now saying total contribution, contribution from both gym and crash total contribution from both gym and crash we are now adding from the gym it's 108 from the crash it's 25 so you get 133 then you say total sales total sales from gym and crash Total sales from gym and crash equals 124 for the gym and 28 for the crash, 153. Now, if you want now to find weighted contribution to sales ratio, you just divide the two figures. So you say weighted, 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 sorry, contribution, sales, Weighted contribution to sales ratio is a matter of saying equals 133 divided by 153. You get 87%. Remember, these are percentages. So this is weighted contribution to sales ratio. The question said, calculate weighted contribution to sales ratio and budgeted profit. So you, you can now understand that this is how you calculate weighted contribution to sales ratio. If you have forgotten the formula, please, 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 my dearest, my dearest colleagues, play the video that you have here. The video I've just sent here, please. This one, which you, you Lade just sent. Thanks, you Lade, for sending this video. So, so perfect. Play it here. It is in our WhatsApp class group. You can you can find it. Or you can search it up in my YouTube channel, Cost Volume Profit Analysis. And remember, the channel name is Colin Mpazi Atlens Resources. That's the channel name. Okay. Then continuing. Continuing. They are saying budgeted profit. So you're saying profit achievable following uh, you say profit 
achievable profit achievable with the crash proposal with the crash proposal profit achievable with the crash proposal so what what is the profit achievable if you put crash you simply say total contribution total contribution from both you know a total contribution from both gym and crash what's profit it's, it's a matter of saying so total contribution from both gym and crash is 133 and then you say less total fixed costs less total fixed costs total fixed costs from both gym and crash from both gym and crash i'm not seeing that because we, we, we want to calculate profit so what is the total fixed cost from the gym it's forty eight thousand. we have it then uh, for the by equals minus if you can say equals minus open bracket forty eight thousand plus what are what are the fixed costs from the crash what are the fixed costs from the crash proposal if we if we come up with a crash total fixed cost is eight thousand per month so plus eight one two three close bracket fifty six if you tally this up this is the profit achievable if you've got both gym and crash this is profit profit achievable this is the profit achievable if we have the crash proposal so you can see here to get the 87 percent and to get this the this carried six marks so already this question is a 20 mark question from question a you already have eight from question uh, b you now have what question a was was it eight yes a b was eight plus c six marks that's 14 Notice how we are gobbling the marks. Without even learning much, you can gobble as many, as many marks as possible. Now let us go to let us go to question D. Question D, which is the last question. Advise health nuts considering both financial and non-financial factors, whether it should replace cafe with a crash. And with the calculations in part C provide enough information to make such a decision. They're saying from, you know, if you want to advise a health nurse whether coming up with a crash is ideal. It depends on, you know, it depends on, uh, it depends on what is our current profit without a crash. And then we compare it with profit with crash to see if the crash proposal is going to make some sense. And then we also need to take into account relevant non-financial factors, relevant, the most relevant non-financial factors. They need to be brought to the fore. You get that, my colleagues? Get that, you get it well. So it's a matter of doing it like this, listen. This is now question number D. A profit without crash. Profit without crash. If we, uh, this is now without crash. Without crash, meaning current profit. It's a matter of saying this is current profit. Current profit. Profit without crash, current profit. So what do we do? Uh, you say gym contribution. Remember we have worked gym contribution. Gym contribution. If we don't have crash, gym has got 9,900 times eight. 9,900 times eight. This is what we are earning from the gym. 
equals 9,900 visitors multiplied by eight. This is what we are currently earning from the gym. And then cafe profit, cafe, cafe, uh, uh, let's say cafe contribution, cafe contribution, cafe contribution is Remember half, currently half of customers are visiting the cafe. So it's 4,950 multiplied by, what was the contribution for the cafe? We calculated it way, way back in question number one, 1, 1,144, that was the contribution for the cafe. So if you can multiply this by 1, 